The young man turned to the half-naked guy who put his hand on his shoulder and smacked him in the nose so hard that he even bled. The gray-haired man asked the guy who he was, and even sneaks up on him from behind. The stranger just grinned, licking a drop of blood with his tongue. How interesting everything was to him. He also hit the guy in the face in response. Brother Yin realized that the opponent was clearly not inferior to him in strength. Therefore, I shouted to him that if he took another step, the guy would personally crush the frog that he was holding in his hands. Rubus asked the gray-haired man if he thought he could scare him. And what does he offer then? Brother Yin shouted to his blonde Zio Yu to bring him his fanny pack. She threw it into his hands. This bag was connected to the owner by blood. And if that guy wants to take it for himself, the waste bag will explode along with the frog inside. If the thief wants to take the monster from him, then they will follow the rules of the Divine King Mainland. And the best solution would be a fair bet. The half-naked guy agreed with this proposal and the swamp frog became the tough guy's bet. The blue-haired man asked if the guy considers himself equal to him. The fighter took out a card with 10,000 gold that he had recently earned for the dragon and said that this was his bet. The enemy did not expect this. The blonde who was standing next to her lit up with happiness, imagining how they would get rich if Yin still won. Is he really that hot today? The thief asked if the blonde man thought he could beat him. He replied that until they try, they won't know, and swung his foot at the blue-haired one. However, he was able to stop the blow with just his hand. It was too weak for him and he began to tease the guy. The next blow hit the head, and the guy noted that the guy definitely has strength, but the accuracy is lame. The blonde suddenly laughed. Noticing that the opponent was bleeding and not understanding who he was cowering in front of. In the next second, Brother Yin was pinned to the ground. Not expecting that the opponent was so fast, she swung her arm for the next blow. But the blue-haired man defeated him again, putting his knee under the opponent's back. And then there were more blows that left their traces. Brother Yin was careless, because he did not think that the blue-haired man was so strong. He replied that he was just a weakling. Damn it. And what should the guy do now? Yin turned to the girl and shouted at her to treat him, because he would not last any longer. She replied that she would use magic to heal the guy, but dropped her wand from her hands. Her hand was shaking so much that she couldn't even hold the wand. Brother Yin suddenly yelled at her, couldn't she be more serious at least now? Or maybe she's an actor sent by the enemy. The blue-haired guy from somewhere behind said that it wouldn't be worth the guy to be distracted. He hit the blonde again, that he flew far away, and told the girl that she could share her boyfriend, because he doesn't beat women. Enraged to the nines, Yin got up from the ground and again went to attack the enemy, pushing off from the grass. The guys collided with their hands in a blow, but the blue-haired man seemed to be mocking the guy. He started laughing, asking if he really calls these weak attempts fist bumps. At this time, the girl belligerently shouted for Brother Yin to hold on, because she was already rushing to his aid. She held out her magic wand with a heart in front of her and spoke to the venerable supreme deity Rakia to grant her the power to heal a friend. She conjures the power of love that moves in a circle. The blonde man shouted to her to stop messing around there and help him as soon as possible. Zio continued to whisper incantations so that the light of healing would save her comrade. Suddenly, a glowing pink field appeared around the blue-haired man and he suddenly stopped. He suddenly said that these two are good people. They are too kind, since they heal their own enemy. And he even somehow got confused by such unexpected care. Brother Yin stood in shock. The girl immediately began to apologize as soon as she realized that she had missed a little. She's not good at controlling healing from a distance, so here's what happened. The blonde man was petrified, and then suddenly he roared desperately at the fact that he had joined a group with a person like her. The blue-haired youth only laughed maliciously on the sidelines, but again prepared for battle when Yin decided to rely only on himself. His gaze was very angry. At this time, near the river, the harm of large mushrooms that grew like trees, the boy caught a frog in his hands, disappointed that it was ordinary. The swamp frog is almost the same size as the usual one and their only difference is the color of their eyes. There are a pair of small scaly wings around the eyes of the swamp frog, throwing the frog back into the water. Kiu Lin suggested that the brunette look elsewhere for this sick frog. There is a field outside the frog zone, and maybe they will finally get lucky there. Suddenly the couple stopped because they noticed some kind of fight on the field. The blue-haired man and brother Yin were still fighting. Lin noticed that both guys were pretty tough, and Kai and Zhu recognized the blue-haired guy that they met at the task board. The guys fought as if for life and death. The blue-haired one overcame the opponent this way and that, Brother Yin once again fell to the ground, writhing his face in pain. And then the brunette shouted to the half-naked guy to stop, because this way a guy can be beaten to death. Lin, standing behind her, noticed that the girl's sense of justice was too strongly expressed. The blue-haired man only grinned in response and punched the guy in the stomach with such force that the ground shook and clouds of smoke rose. He looked down at Yin and said that it was necessary to listen to him from the very beginning. And then he reached into his purse, where the grey-haired man put the frog. 
It was not worth tripling this bet, since he is so weak. In the end, Yin not only lost the fight, but also lost the frog. The guy took out a jar with a frog that Zhu recognized. The blue-haired man noticed that the couple standing next to him recognized the frog and asked if they were also interested in it. They want to try to take her away from him. The girl noticed that suddenly the blue cone disappeared from the guy's hands. But then Qi Lin intervened and said that it did not disappear at all, but just the guy hid it in the ring. The blue-haired man was surprised at the guy's observation, because you don't often meet a knowledgeable person. The guy pointed to the blue ring on his middle finger and said that this is a spatial ring that recognizes the owner with blood, and the kid won't be able to get a swamp frog, even if he takes away the ring, unless he can imagine something equivalent to him. And then the blue-haired man suggested that Lin make a divine king bet with him, even though he himself had told the losing partner a couple of minutes ago that it was a bad idea. If Lin can defeat the blue-haired one, then he will give him the frog. Zhu told Lin that it wasn't worth it, because they couldn't beat the guy. However, he replied that they could not just give up and if they did not complete the task, their group would earn a bad reputation, which would negatively affect them. If the group wants to leave the city for beginners, and go to a better place, then it must complete each task. Kai and Zhu hesitated, because they can't take such a risk. Besides, they don't have something equivalent to make a bet. The boy asked the girl how she would know if they were at risk or not, if they hadn't even tried. The guy held out his hand to her, in which lay a glowing ball that the guy pulled out of the snake when he was fighting with that. The girl stared at the palm with all her eyes and asked what it was. Standing on the sidelines, the blue-haired man heard something interesting and was surprised that the guy had something like an inner pill, and then stretched out his hand and asked if he could look at it. The blonde gave the ball away and said that he could watch as much as he wanted, to which the girl was indignant. Is that right? After all, the boy just gave him a pill right into his hands. Lin assured her that he had everything under control, because he had already put his blood on her and now he was her master. At this time, the blue-haired man carefully examined the pill, noticing the brilliance and fluctuations of energy. It was a top-class internal pill. He turned to the blonde man and said that he could offer a swamp frog and 50,000 gold coins for this little ball. The brunette was shocked by such a sum because it's not at all small for a group like them. But Lin told the girl not to be fooled, because if you put this pill up for auction, you can get at least 200,000 gold from it. Zhu was indignant why the guy had been carrying an item worth 200,000 gold with him all this time. The blue-haired guy told the guy that it's not always useful to know a lot, and he has no idea where he got so lucky that he got such an inner pill. However, after meeting him, the guy's luck came to an end. Lin asked if this pill was enough for a bet. The opponent smiled, saying that the guy did well, since he still puts it as a bet. Then Lin asked the blue-haired man not to refuse him advice, and he replied that the boy would regret it. Zio Qi Lin told the head to move away so that she wouldn't be accidentally hurt, but she only asked in response if he was crazy, since he was betting 200,000 gold against 7,000. The boy replied that she should not worry, because he would never lose. It was obvious that the girl was very nervous. She told Qi Lin that if he suddenly lost, she would never forgive him. The guys got ready to fight, elated by the victory over the last opponent. The blue-haired man was sure that he would easily defeat the new guy, so he didn't worry too much about him. Ott pushed off the ground, swinging his leg to strike as before, but Lin was able to block the blow easily. The blue-haired man considered that this was not a very bad defense. Then he spun around again, like a karate kid, and hit the guy with his foot right in the stomach, and then Lin sprayed a green substance into the opponent's face, just like that snake. The blue-haired man did not understand what he had done, because now he could not see anything. The green mass hit him right in the eyes. How did the guy dare to resort to such a vile technique? Zio said that on this mainland, you can use any technique to win, so what's so mean about it? The blue-haired man was not happy, and promised the scoundrel to kill him. And when Lin wanted to attack from behind, the opponent knocked him out with one blow. Then, Lin, like lightning, attacked the blue-haired man from behind again, getting an elbow in the stomach. Qi Lin fell to the ground, receiving more and more blows from the blue-haired man. And when he was holding the guy by the head, swinging his fist, the blonde suddenly stood up and the opponent heard the trampling of the iron-horned yak. Taking advantage of the blue-haired man's hitch, Lin attacked the guy, returning all the blows to him. They kicked each other with their feet, hands, knees. When they both fell to the ground, the blue-haired man realized that it was very difficult to fight with this guy, not like with the last opponent. Both youths were taking a deep breath, breathing furiously. The blue-haired man's vision was a little blurred, and he needed to recover. It looks like the blonde's ability is able to blind the target for a maximum of one minute. This guy is strange. How many monster abilities does he have? Of course, he knows that there are many talented geniuses in this world, so this is the guy's ability. At this time, the blue-eyed man thought that the wounds were quite serious. Several broken ribs, but it went much better than he expected anyway. He had achieved his goal by expending some of the pill's strength. Lin absorbed the ball right in front of the blue-haired man 
and then he fully recovered and is ready for a new fight. The blue-haired man asked if this meant that the kid had hidden another trick. Because of the inner pill, Kyu Lin's magic had increased to the fourth level, but it was worthless to the opponent, and if you add to this strength also his attack power of an eighth rank warrior, then he will at least be able to injure the blue-haired one. The kid suddenly had some stony hands instead of hands, and then he was completely ready for a new round. Due to the stone growths, the guy increased his body weight, so he lost speed, and because of this he missed with a blow. The opponent sneered that the guy was full of surprises, but it was time to end these games. The blue-haired man noted that the guy is really talented, but he just loves to destroy his kind. Suddenly, some strange sounds appeared under the feet of the blue-haired man, and large strange roots came out from there, so that the guy had to jump aside. He yelled at the blonde, realizing that he was not a genius, but a fucking fraud. Lin jumped high into the sky, preparing to strike. The blue-haired man looked up and realized that there was no way he could dodge. But this was just a trick that the blonde fell for. The blue-haired man pushed off with his hand from the ground and swung his axles with a strong leg to hit the opponent. That kid has nowhere to run. All the stone growths on Kyu Lin's hands crumbled to smithereens, and he rode on the grass. The young man looked down at Sayo Kyu Lin and asked if the guy thought that he would be able to win over him any minute now. But then he suddenly realized that something sharp was sticking out of his leg. He didn't understand when the guy just managed to do it. Lin was lying on the ground while a trickle of blood was flowing from his mouth, and replied that he had watched the guy's fight and noticed that he always puts force into the punch. Since the beginning of the fight, Lin has always had only one goal, to deprive the blue-haired man of his leg, and now let him get it. Kyu Lin took off in an instant and attacked the enemy, while he realized that he was not moving much with his injured leg. Does this kid really want to strike such a straightforward blow? He will be able to restrain him, and then redirect the force of the blow to the other leg, inflicting a fatal blow on Pan. Kyu Lin hit the blue-haired man in his innermost place, which caused sparks to fall from his eyes. He fell flat on the ground, and the jar with the swamp frog rolled right under Lin's feet. Picking up the jar, he calmly told the young man that he was taking it for himself. When the blue-haired man asked if the guy would dare to name his group because they would fight another time. After waiting for a couple of moments, Sayo Kyu Lin asked if he was a fool if he thought the guy was so stupid and would immediately tell him to expect revenge from him in the future. After saying goodbye, Lin walked away while the blue-haired man shouted after him. Is he a man or what? Was he really scared? The guy kept insisting that if a guy is a man, then he has nothing to be afraid of. Lin didn't care what they said to him, let him wail on. Kai and Zhu started praising the guy when he came closer, how good he was, how cool he was, that he was the only hope of their thousand snows group. She admires the kid more and more. The blue-haired man heard the name of the group while still lying on the ground, which Kyu Lin didn't like very much. He handed the girl a flask with a swamp frog, because the task? Consider it completed. Zhu found the guy so impenetrable, how strong is he? Dot 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 she feels safe with him. Therefore, as soon as she receives the reward, she will give him a feast in the evening. The girl was in such a good mood, because everything went smoothly, to which the guy replied that he was just lucky. The young man at this time shed angry tears, probably from pain, and shouted after the guy that he remembered him. One day he will repay the humiliation he suffered today. Damn him. Meanwhile, Kai and Zhu and Kyu Lin approached Yin and the blonde, who was trying to heal him with her magic wand. Brother Yin was badly injured, and she was apologizing to him for not being able to protect him properly. She uses the remnants of her magic to heal the guy, because she hopes that a miracle will still happen. Suddenly Lin recognized the girl. He realized that everything was different from his past life, since he had not met her here. Zio Yu was sitting on the ground next to the injured guy, and crying with grief. Kyu Lin approached her from the side, asking if she would let him help. The blonde turned in his direction, asking who he was, to which the guy replied that he was a miracle. The little girl fell into a kind of stupor. How is it a miracle? Lin, meanwhile, summoned his inner pill again, and bent over the guy, which caused the girl to fuss. He ordered her to watch carefully, and began to immerse the pill inside the wounded man's body, while Zio continued to ask what the guy was doing with her partners. Ki Lin asked her to be quiet because she was concentrating on her work, and the next moment Brother Yin's breathing returned to him. He slowly opened his eyes, asking where he was. The blonde fell on his chest hugging and bursting into tears. She was so glad that he was alive, because she was scared to death herself. Yin finally realized what had happened to him and who had thrown himself on his neck, so he jumped up abruptly and shouted to the girl to get out. Standing on the sidelines, Ki Lin was a little taken aback by this reaction, while brother Yin was already standing on his own two feet and cursing at poor Xiao Yu. He asked how she only had the courage to show herself in front of him, was she not gnawing at her conscience for what had happened? In her place, he would have dug a hole for himself long ago and buried himself alive. He managed to step into this kind of shit, since he took a girl into his group. Ben Yin shouted furiously at her to get out of sight and roll away from here as far as she could, 
because he didn't want to see her anymore. Never. Fighting back tears. Xi Ouyu replied that she had told him from the very beginning that she was very weak. Why did he agree to take her into the group at all? Brother Yin even gave her the middle finger and replied, Would he have taken her if not for her pretty face? She understands this herself, so why is she showing off now? Walking away, Yin began to mumble, What is the point of being pretty on the Divine King's mainland? Suddenly he turned back to the girl and gave advice. She should find a place where there is no one and commit suicide. And if he continues to live deceiving, he will only harm others. Let him die better then. At these insults, Xiao Yu only roared harder than before. How can you say that to a poor girl? Qiu Lin couldn't stay away when a person is so terribly offended. So he just walked up to Yin and punched him in his face with his fist, which made the guy's nose bleed again. He howled in pain while Lin kicked him. And then offered two options. The first, he would apologize to the girl for everything he had said to her. And the second, he would continue to lie here further. Brother Yin shouted, asking who this guy is in general, and why is he showing off here in front of this fool? What a shitty luck he had today, since he met a group of idiots here. Kainzu, who had been silent all the time before, also could not stay away, so she hit the guy in the face with her beautiful leg. Brother Yin left a whole strip on the grass behind him. How dare he hit a girl? The brunette just hates losers like him. That jerk got even angrier than before, since another nut ran out. Did they accidentally mix up anything? How can they beat such a good person like him without understanding the situation? That blonde almost killed him, and he's the victim here, how can they not understand? He was crying on the sidelines and mumbled something, saying that the guy was right, because she was too weak. I couldn't help and now brother Yin has suffered. Zhu continued to push, because this jerk decided to pick up a girl, taking her with him to fight monsters. And as soon as he lost, she was immediately to blame for everything. He should be very ashamed to say the word comrade. Kai and Zhu asked Xi Ok Lin to teach that scoundrel a lesson while she was talking to that poor girl. At this time, Brother Yin began to resent loudly and asked who they were in general and why they were meddling in their own business. It's not his fault, so why are they going against morality? Then Lin asked in response if he had offended that poor girl. And while he was talking, stones began to rise around, which alerted the gray-haired man. Lin said that weakness for a frog. Hearing this, the brunette stretched out her hand to the girl and asked her if she wanted to see how Zio Q would punish that scoundrel. He quietly agreed and only said that she hoped that they would not be very cruel to him. Because after all, there is her fault in what happened. The older one smiled and replied so that she wouldn't worry, because they just want to make him apologize and that's it. No one is hurting that guy. Q Lin returned with a jar of frog and stood over the guy who was trapped between the sharp stones. He shouted to the blonde that she was a bitch and asked if it was nice for her to watch these demons mock him. The blonde wanted to say something, but stopped. Zhu put her hand on her shoulder and told her not to be afraid, because they are close. Meanwhile, Lin took a frog out of the jar and pressed it to throw something out. The guy lying on the ground was worried. What is this guy up to? If he is going to use it, then let him not hesitate. Lin only replied that the guy had too long a tongue. He would like to see how long the guy can continue to be so stubborn. Kyu Lin brought the frog to the gray-haired man's face, and a white stream of something incomprehensible sprayed out of his mouth. The guy screamed, because there was little pleasant about it. Zio Yu was embarrassed, calling such actions very obscene. And then Kai and Zhu asked the guy to stop, because it's not worth showing this to a girl. Zio Kyu Lin said that the preparations were finished, and the guy lying on the ground abruptly opened his eyes and said that he had had enough. He asked the kid if he had a brain, since he was targeting him. Kyu Lin asked, did Brother Yin still not understand anything? Then, the blonde will have to ask him a couple of questions, and pointed in the direction of the blonde, saying that the guy hit her. So what is the relationship between them after all? Not just because they are teammates. The gray-haired man hissed through his teeth that Sio Yu was just an ordinary girl he had recently got himself, and he was a special one since he fell in love with her. Kyu Lin grinned and asked if that meant they were a couple. And he realized to himself that it seemed that his guess was confirmed. In a previous life, they met Sio Yu only three months later, when her boyfriend left her and she curled up somewhere in a corner of a huge forest. After the head of Kai and Zhu took her in, she became a companion in their group. Kyu Lin still remembers the despair in her eyes when he first saw her, exactly the same as his own, before he met with the head of Kai and Zhu. Maybe in his previous life he had never met her boyfriend. But if you compare the time before and after, then almost certainly it is the one whom he cured with an internal pill. Now that he remembered, he felt very sorry for Zio Yu, it was not worth saving the guy. And since everything came to this in the end, he should show her what he really is. A short pain is always better than a long one. Zio Kyu Lin recalled to the guy that Zio Yu was his girlfriend, and he hit her for not outstanding abilities, was rude, and even threw her later. They just want Yin to apologize for his wrongdoing, is there anything wrong with that? Nevertheless, Yin continued to bend his line, proving that he almost died because of that girl. 
And then Kyu Lin asked him if he knew why he was still alive. To begin with, there is quite a big difference in strength between him and that blue-haired man, and even if Sayo Yu had given him excellent support, would he have been able to defeat that guy? From the eyes of Brother Yin, it was clear that the above does not fit in his head and he has a rather complex thought process going on. When he was beaten half to death, the girl exhausted all her magic power for the sake of the scoundrel and helped save his life. And if she wasn't sincere to him, would she be like a crying child, sobbing and treating him? However, her sincerity was trampled by some jerk and his cold slap in the face with a ruthless refusal. Was her mistake alone enough to abandon her and not forgive her? All this made Kyu Lin wonder why the guy was running after her at all. Had he ever really liked her? Yin grinned maliciously. How can he like trash like that poor girl? The blonde standing on the sidelines clarified that Yin Lai's brother had just said these terrible words to her. Had all his words about loving her turned out to be a complete lie? The young man continued to insult the poor girl, because she is just a girl picked up by him out of boredom for fun and that's all. No matter how, men need to please their physiological needs, and if this defender likes her so much, then let her take it for free, he's just sick of looking at her now. The blue-eyed man called the guy scum, got up and walked in the other direction, completing the dialogue. He's done with the questions and there's nothing more to talk about with such a person. Whether he repents or not, the kid doesn't care anymore. Trapped in a vice on the ground. The guy couldn't believe that this bastard had abandoned him and left without freeing him. Although, I don't care, it's even much better, because when the head comes to save him. At this time, the blonde returned to the two girls and apologized for the delay. He took a long time with that jerk. The head of the group asked the guy what he had sprayed in Brother Yin's face, and Kiu Lin replied that it was the bodily fluids of a swamp frog. It's spring, the mating season for monster frogs, and it's time for breeding. The bodily fluids of the swamp frog attract frogs of the opposite sex, and just in time they can satisfy its physiological needs. A pink frog crawled up to Yin, and the guy could not understand what she had forgotten here, and even such a nasty one. Why was she staring at him with such lust in her eyes? The frog jumped on the guy, as if taking him into his heartfelt embrace. She put her red lips forward and kissed the guy on the lips. The guy must have felt an unprecedented disgust, because the next second he screamed terribly loudly and called for help. But before he knew it, the others came running, and everyone looked at him like a piece of meat. The only thing left for the guy was to apologize and admit his guilt, just to be saved. Kai and Zhu was laughing loudly on the sidelines, driving away from that idiot's expression. Lin asked Sayo Yu if she thought this was a strong enough punishment, because if she was not satisfied, then the guy could come up with other punishments so long as the girl was happy. The blonde was already embarrassed by such attention. Did the guy do that on purpose to cheer her up? These guys really want to drag her in. To your group, the next second, unexpectedly for everyone, you asked Lin to let go of her brother, and he obeyed in the blink of an eye. He snapped his fingers and the stone vise released Yin. Looking around, the guy realized that everything had gone too far, because that frog guy was even kissed on the lips, and then Zio Yu couldn't stand it and laughed very loudly. It was as if she had a tantrum, and so she poured out everything that had accumulated over this long day. The head and Kyu Lin stood on the sidelines and were a little surprised by the blonde's behavior. Then you turned to the brunette and stunned her with a question. She asked if that girl happened to like girls, otherwise why did she have to get so close to her? She's such a jerk, and dragging her into your group would be a terrible mistake. And also this guy. She is very grateful to him for showing her all the worthlessness of that scumbag, and also for showing who she is in the eyes of such scum. Lin suddenly realized that you was still sincere. Can't she look into the eyes of people who sincerely care for her with dignity? The girl replied that he should not speak as if he knew her well. She's number one among losers, so it's better not to take her as a comrade. It has appeared and will disappear, so they should just forget about it. People who unite with her in a group end up badly. The girl waved her hand and ran off into the sunset, singing a strange song, while Kai and Zhu and Kyu Lin stood and looked after her. And yet she is strange. Lin stood up for her because the distance hit her hard, but the more she kills them to refuse, the more it will mean that she likes them. Because of her lack of self-confidence, she cannot be sincere with herself in front of people who are kind to her. While Yu was running away, the brunette asked the guy why he spoke as if he knew her well. Did they know each other before? The blonde replied that they met a long time ago and Sayo Yu is really a very nice girl. Kai and Zhu said that since he says so, then she also begins to like this girl. And if they meet her again, it will be necessary to invite her to them. It feels like the girl on the street will only be bullied. Lin asked the girl not to worry, because he knows where to find Zio Yu. Noticing that it was already quite late, the head and the guy went to hand over the task. Meanwhile, a blonde man with a thick mustache was descending a stone staircase to the basement, while holding a lantern in front of him. He went up to the wall to which the red-haired young man was chained and told Tom that they had not seen each other for a long time. And then he called him son Rubis. 
Addressing his son Rubus, the gentleman said that his younger brother Leon was killed last night right in his own house. In response to this news, there was only a deaf silence, and the man asked if he would not react in any way to the news of his own brother's death. This is not surprising, because Rubus was originally a cold-blooded and ruthless monster. The man's last regret is that he allowed that woman to give birth to him. The red-haired man finally opened his eyes and grinned. Then the man asked if he had warmed up the guy's interest now. Rubus rudely asked the stinking old man what he needed. If he has something to say, then let him speak right now and not pull the rubber. Then the man decided to go with the trumps and said that he could tell the guy everything about his own mother. But first the guy has to avenge his son. And then the man will help about his return to his mother. Rubus chuckled and replied that a man should understand the result of his deception. And then he asked who should be killed. Then the gentleman reached into the breast pocket on his jacket and took out a photo of Kainzu and Kyu Lin. The photo flew to the floor right under Rubus' feet. And he carefully began to study the faces of future victims. He was amused that only two people were able to corner the head of the Bodden family so much that he had to turn to his illegitimate son. Almost certainly they have an unusual origin. Therefore a man cannot offend them. The man replied that the boy had no support because he was the son of an ordinary blacksmith. But the girl, she is the daughter of the most powerful family at the moment. The daughter of the head of the Soul of the Night Clan, Rubus asked. And what did the princess of the Soul of the Night Clan forget here? Is he really looking for thrills? Then the mustachioed man replied that the guy didn't need to know any special details. He just wants Rubus to get rid of them as soon as possible. Only no one in the outside world should know that they are connected. Rubus replied that he never wanted to be associated with his father. At this time, Kyan Zhu and Sayo Kyu Lin returned from a frog assignment and a little old man with glasses was carefully examining a cone with a swamp frog. He made sure that it was really a swamp frog and asked the young people if they would accept cash or a magic card. The guys chose a map, and the old man said he would be very glad to see them again. Kyan Zhu was very happy that they had money again. A lot of money. After all, it's so good when they are. Lin asked the brunette what she was going to do with the money now, to which she replied that she wanted to strengthen all the equipment, and she would go one-on-one -on -one to the blacksmith right now. Then the guy reminded her not to forget to buy a protective potion, but the head replied that she really liked pure strength. At this time, Zio Yu was peeking at them from around the corner, and Lin noticed it. He told the brunette to go ahead because he was going to sort something out. The girl asked when he would be back, because she was going to cook a hearty dinner for him. The blonde man mysteriously told her to prepare some more appliances then. Zhu didn't quite understand what the guy meant. And then he explained that he was talking about Zio Yu, who was currently watching them. Does Lin really want to bring this girl into their group? Then let him not forget to lie and tell about the advantages of their group. The guy smiled and promised that he would talk to Zio Yu properly. They had a funny clash of heads. And the girl suddenly remembered that she had not yet paid the guy's salary from the group. Now is the right time to deal with this debt. The blonde did not understand what she was talking about. But the girl sharply ordered him not to move, and then she kissed him on the lips. Lin froze at first, and then, when he realized what was happening, he closed his eyes and answered. Zio Yu, who had been watching them all this time, suddenly turned away. Now she understood the relationship between these two. The brunette pulled away after a while and said that now he was hers, and could not meet with his sister without her permission. Zio Kyu Lin was just beside himself with happiness. While he was in some kind of prostration, the girl informed him that she would go on business and reminded the guy to come back early. She will be waiting for him very much. Kyu Lin was lying at her feet, and when the girl left, he raised his head and asked into the void, does the head of Kyan Su really like him? What should he do now? He just wants to help her realize her dream by being around. He will tell her the words that he buried in his heart only when he fulfills her dream. It's too early, he can't keep the girl safe. And what should he do now? Zio Yu, who was standing around the corner, was watching the guy and couldn't figure out if he was one of those people who talked to themselves. But then the guy disappeared in an instant, and she didn't even notice. The guy's voice was heard from behind, which made the girl scared. Kyu Lin asked her if she was spying on someone here. The blonde turned around and asked when he managed to appear behind her. The blue-eyed noticed that this was a very good question, and replied that just when she was fascinated by life. Then he jumped off the ledge and asked if she had thought everything over about their group. The girl pretended that she did not understand at all what he was talking about there. She's only here to say that the guy doesn't need to show up here. It's because Brother Yin and the head of the mountain group are looking for him. The guy grinned and said affirmatively that she was worried about him, and she just said that he got into trouble because of her. She can no longer stay in the former group, because the head asked her to make a commission of 10,000 gold, and she can't afford so much, so they continue to mock her. The young man was amazed at such a robbery in broad daylight. Care for 10,000 gold. So let this head look for himself. Lin will tell him the reason why he can't not let the girl go. 
The blonde with the yell asked the guy if he was sick by chance. Does he even know what kind of person the head of her group is? Let him not even think of bothering him. The guy replied that it seems she doesn't really believe in him. After all, he himself used to be like her, a weakling who is being bullied. He was abandoned by his friends. And then he thought that there were no good people on the Divine King's mainland. But then he changed. And I understood the meaning of the word comrade. Deep down, you also wants to find a reliable companion, doesn't he? The girl repeated her phrase, let her not speak as if she knows her well. Len said that he really knows her well. And then he began to list the facts about the girl. Her name is Sio Yu. She herself is an or from the Kirk clan, arrived at the metric of the Divine King at the age of 11, following her brother. Later, in order to succeed, the brother left the city for beginners and went on a higher level journey. But because she could not catch up with her brother in level and started dragging him down, he left her here. That's why she was left alone, without real comrades. Some of them were ordinary womanizers who took her on assignments purely out of convention. The girl was in shock. How did the guy only know everything about her? Then admitted that she had told him everything herself, but only in the past. They were comrades for a very long time. She should pay attention to where his finger is pointing. Hugh Lin pointed his finger to the side and said that from now on, in just five seconds, that silver-haired and big man would appear. The girl did not believe. It couldn't be true. At this time, the blonde man started counting down and exactly five seconds later, a man in a white suit and a red tie appeared from around the corner and behind him stood none other than Brother Yin. He also noticed Kyu Lin and Howlett's yell that this deceiver has finally been found. Lin only responded with a quiet and peaceful greeting. The big guy who was standing next to him in a suit asked, is this really the guy Yin was talking about? Brother Yin confirmed the identity of that guy, because now he will never be able to forget his face. Zio Kyu Lin advised him to forget after all because he doesn't want some guy to think about him every day. The man in the suit wondered how his warrior could not cope even with a child, to which Yin said that it was a pure accident. The man told this scum not to justify his shame. Then he went up to Qiu Lin and started saying that he dared to touch a member of his gore group. Does he realize what the consequences would be in this case? The blonde replied that he was very interested. Was this guy really going to teach him? Zio Yu intervened in the conversation and asked the men not to quarrel, and told the head that it was all her fault. And if he really wants to punish someone, then let him punish her. The man was very indignant and asked her what right she had to talk to him at all. She's a loser who can't even treat. What kind of conscience does one have to have to stand here next to him? And why hasn't she gotten out of here yet? Zio Kyu Lin stood up for the girl and said that she would not go anywhere, because it was this big guy who would go. It seemed to the man that maybe he misheard, but the blonde repeated that he was ordering him to go. And then the head of the mountain group got very angry and fell to his knees, while the girl and brother Yin did not understand what was happening. A huge man fell to the ground, and the gray-haired man asked what happened to his head. He must get up immediately. At this time, Kyu Lin approached Zio Yu and asked her if she was filled with magic power now. The girl replied that yes, fully recovered. Then the guy said that there should be no problems with treatment at such a close distance and pointed to the man's head that was lying on the ground. The girl could not understand why it was necessary to treat the head if he knocked him down himself. And if she cured him, then he would get her again. Zio Kyu Lin assured the blonde that everything was fine. She was still a member of the mountain group and this guy was still its head. This time she will help the head and do what a real comrade should do. Let her think that this way she will atone for her past mistakes so that they can't say anything about her. Brother Yin furiously asked the kid what he was up to. However, he was quickly silenced and asked not to interfere in other people's affairs. If he takes a single step, Kyu Lin will break the scoundrel's leg. The gray-haired man called the boy a bastard, but no one paid much attention to it. The guy and the girl were standing next to the recumbent man and then Kyu Lin pushed the blonde into action. She put her hands forward and stretched out to the man's head. Everything around lit up with a green light. The man suddenly opened his eyes abruptly and jumped to his feet. He shouted at Lin, calling him scum, and asked how he could attack him so suddenly. How would he have hit him if the head hadn't been distracted? The boy asked the man who made him swagger in front of him, and now also tremble. Meanwhile, Brother Yin asked his head if he was okay, but he was shut up again. There will be no mercy for the guy if he dares to tell someone about today's incident. The gray-haired man, nervously, replied that he understood everything. The man was very angry. He was so taken out by this impudent boy. He was literally puffing like a bull that even smoke was coming out of his ears and nose. He asked the boy if he was ready to die, because he wasn't going to just leave it all. Having prepared for the attack, the man crouched down and shouted the cry from the number one group of the Green Lake City. The mountain of the mountain group is a cold-blooded lion. Fight the guy. When the man was already approaching, Lin simply disappeared in an instant, and the opponent did not even notice it right away. Zio Kyu Lin was behind him, 
Then the man turned around sharply, swinging for a new blow, but the guy disappeared from his field of vision again. The man started to get really pissed off, and when the guy showed up on his hand, Hugh Lin openly teased the man, asking him why he was fighting with air. What a bastard this guy is after all. The man struck again, and seeing that a huge fist was about to stick to Lin, Xiao Yu shouted at him to be careful. Yin tried to support his head, and shouted at Tom to crack the skull of that guy. To all these threats, the blue-eyed man only grinned and was able to block the blow, so much so that the opponent's hand hurt badly. Lightning seemed to fall from everywhere. The guy then punched the man in the stomach while he was distracted by his sore arm, and the control blow was a huge hook in the face, after which the man flew off several meters and crashed into the wall. Brother Yin couldn't figure out how it happened. Everything was covered in dust. At this time, Kyu Lin turned to the girl and told her to stop getting used to standing idle, because as a magician, she should always monitor the condition of her comrades, and then take appropriate measures. The girl stood rooted to the spot, muttering something to herself. She asked about the head of the group, but the guy convinced her not to worry about the man, because he was just unconscious. Meanwhile, Kai and Zhu was strolling through the market, choosing food for the upcoming delicious dinner. Passing by the cabbage, the girl remembered that Sio Kyu Lin has a very small stature and most likely this is due to a lack of vitamins and poor nutrition. The brunette needs to pay more attention to his diet and allow him to eat more. The saleswoman behind the shop, a heavy woman, near whom the girl was looking at vegetables, said that she was looking too long and it was time to buy something or leave. The girl was angered by such a remark and she snapped, asking the woman if it was difficult for her to be patient. How does she even talk to her clients? The woman gave up and admitted her guilt, only asked her to stop squeezing vegetables, because she noticed that the brunette had recently crushed several tomatoes. In the end, getting angry, Kai and Zhu just paid for the bag and started dragging it to the side, blinking with its weight. After all, she bought too much. The saleswoman behind the counter was standing with a map and was surprised that this girl was really going to buy so much. Will she be able to eat it at all? The girl replied that someone from her group would definitely eat everything. She continued to drag the bag that was bigger than herself. I pushed with the last of my strength and eventually just sat down on the ground because I was very tired. She knew, after all, that she should have called Zio Kia with her to carry all the purchases. Suddenly the brunette was called out and the young guy asked if she needed help. Zhu turned around and saw a red-haired guy in a blue raincoat in front of her. She asked if they knew each other, to which the guy replied that he was just passing by and noticed a worried girl. Zhu noticed to herself that this man looked very much like Leon, and she told the guy that she didn't need any help. The guy replied that he was very sad at the words of the girl and just picked up the bag with one hand. Kai and Zhu was in a stupor for a couple of moments and later noticed that the young man was leaving with her bag on his shoulder. The red-haired man said a strange quote about a straggling Mustang that can't move forward alone. The girl shouted after him what he wanted from her and let him put her groceries in place immediately. Where did he take them, the scoundrel? He only said that if she did not come closer to him, he would not be able to find out the way because he did not know where to carry them. What an impudent fellow. Well, let it be as he wants, the brunette agreed to help. The red-haired man grinned and said that it was a great honor for him to help a beautiful girl. After a while, the couple reached a big house, and the guy put a huge bag on the ground, asking if they had come. Kai and Zhu asked the guy to put the groceries at the door, and she is very grateful for his help. And then she asked how she could thank him. The young man refused, but the girl said that to be clear, she does not like to remain in debt, and especially in front of an unknown man. The young man said that she was too careful. Wasn't she tired of living like this? And if she insists so much, can she treat him? I just want to starve a worm. The brunette thought about it and asked in what century the guy lives, since he only needs to eat. Well, so be it. Let her come inside because in the evening she is going to have a big banquet, and she will take chopsticks for the guy. Her culinary skills are on top, so she will feed him from the belly. The guy said that then he would have to try everything out properly. At this time, the man, the head of the mountain group, woke up and was just furious. Brother Yin stood sweating as his supervisor was beaten over and over again. When the man fell, Lin reminded the girl that she should go and heal the man. It was already the tenth time and she was pretty tired of running around like this. When will it all end? Zio Kyu Lin promised her that this was the last time. That would be enough. Frowning, Zio Yu squatted down in front of the man and began to heal him again. Yin, standing on the sidelines, began to swear at her, saying that she was a cruel creature since she had found a new defender. Meanwhile, the head of the group opened his eyes again and stood up, shouting that Zio did not treat him anymore. Are they some kind of demons? It's like he wakes up from a nightmare every time. Can she let him wake up naturally? She should stop doing this to him, because he is a cold-blooded lion, asking for help for the first time in his life. Well, can she spare him? Lin advised the man not to refuse treatment. It will be better for him later. He can agree to the request of the cold-blooded lion. But only if he says that the guy can take Sio Yu with him, it's not that difficult, is it? 
The man was adamant and replied that she should first pay compensation for the care of 10,000 gold, so he would not give it away so easily. Isn't this guy being too conceited? The blonde replied that the girl had recently saved his life nine times, and his life was worth a thousand gold, or had the blonde been cheap? If Leo thinks that this is not enough, then the guy will happily continue to do it. The man had no choice but to jump to his feet and shout that this scoundrel take the girl, because from that moment she is nobody in their group. All debts are closed. Sio, you couldn't believe that the man was serious. He told her to get out already, because there were only problems from nobodies like her. The gray-haired yin turned out to be dissatisfied, who could not come to terms with the fact that the head just let the girl go. Wasn't she getting off too easy? That's not what they agreed on. They just wanted to get her out of the Divine King's mainland, so why does the head just let her go? The man just shut the guy up and hit him in the face because he was tired of listening to these claims. Wasn't he too conceited? If he's so cool, then let him go and fight that guy himself. It's normal for him to watch the head being beaten, and he just opened his mouth. Rubbing his big cheek, Yin apologized to the head, to which he received only insults in response. Meanwhile, Lin called Zio Yu to follow him, because there was no need for them to watch this farce. However, the man called out to him and asked him to stay. Then he asked if he wanted to join his group, because at the moment it is the strongest in the city of newcomers. And if a strongman like him joins them, then they will definitely be able to win the tournament between the groups next month. If he suddenly wants to join, the head will even give him the place of the head, because they honor strong warriors. Zai Okiu Lin raised his index finger up and said that firstly. He had no idea where the man had such confidence to call his group the strongest. Secondly, relying on his place as the head of the group, and being the strongest in it, a man allows himself to beat and insult his own comrades. After that, they harbor discontent, because they can't even afford to open their mouths in response. The guy will tell him only one thing, since he promised to let Zio Yu go, he should take more care of his comrades. The success of his group is based only on their efforts. That's exactly how failures happen because of their discontent. Without love, the group will be destroyed. While Lin and the blonde were leaving, the man was completely shocked by such speeches. The cold-blooded lion didn't understand how a group could be based on love alone and exist on this divine king continent, and the gray-haired yin standing behind him told the man not to listen to that boy, because only the strong are respected on the mainland. He is ready to go anywhere for the head of the group because of his strength. A man understands this anyway. He just feels sorry that he can't take advantage of such a strong guy like a blonde. And since such a person does not join their group, then he will become their number one enemy. Meanwhile, in Kai and Zhu's house, the red-haired man was eating bread with both cheeks. Then I ate soup and chicken legs with a special appetite. It was the first time in so many years that he had had such a gorgeous dinner, so there was no limit to his joy. The guy had a feeling that any other food would seem like slop to him. At this time, the brunette was carrying a baked piglet that she had prepared for Zio Q, and she hopes that he will grow properly after he eats. When she came to the table, she saw only empty plates and was stunned. The guy was sitting in a too relaxed position at the table with his arms outstretched and said that it was so delicious to him that he couldn't resist and if suddenly she still had something left, then let her carry it. After all, to be honest, his stomach is still empty. The girl screamed that she was not cooking all this for him alone. Then the guy asked why she was so greedy. Didn't they agree that she would quench his appetite? The guy grabbed a plate of baked meat and stuffed a whole pig into his mouth while the girl somewhere in the background shouted that this pig was for Zio Q Lin. Putting an empty plate on the table and wiping his mouth with a napkin, the young man said that he was very jealous of some Zio Q because he not only got a beauty like her, but also such a gorgeous meal. The brunette called him an ignorant person and began to drive the guy away because he is not welcome here at all anymore. The red-haired one said that being cruel and intimidating was her hospitality. The miss from the soul of the night clan. The girl stared at the guy in disbelief. Who is this guy and who sent him? The guy pulled out a photo on the table and said that he was sent to take her life, but he does not want to kill a good person because of some mistake, and therefore wants to confirm one point. He asked if she recognized the man in the photo. The girl picked up the photo and recognized Leon on it. But how did they know that guy? The red-haired man replied that he did not know him and even at this dinner he and the girl got along more than he and that guy in his whole life. Didn't she know that Leon was dead? The girl was in shock. What do you mean, dead? The guy pointed to a snowflake that he pulled out of his pocket along with a photo and said that she must know this subject. This badge was found next to a dead body. The girl looked at the badge in her hand and remembered that she had given it to Zio Q. Something happened after she got drunk last night. Did Zio Q kill Leon while she was passed out? Did he do it for her? The girl recognized the badge and asked the guy what she should do now. Hearing what the girl said, the red-haired man was surprised that Kai and Zhu admitted so quickly that this brooch was hers. He thought that he would have to resort to torture and interrogation, if such a beautiful girl like her would allow herself to be tortured even a little. 
He has a lot of dirty receivers that he can easily use on her. The girl called him abnormal, and he continued to mock. He's not only crazy, but also a criminal. Kai and Zhu was already getting uneasy from the behavior of the guy who was getting closer and closer to her. He said that the dishes prepared by her were simply delicious, but from the very beginning he was tormented by one question, she or the treats prepared by her, which would be tastier. What will it taste like? Does she want to find out? The girl was trapped between the guy and the wall, and she became completely afraid for herself. The guy was grinning so insidiously that even his white fangs were visible. He said he would answer for her when she died and opened his mouth, intending to bite the brunette. However, in the next second, he was hit by an arrow that shot out of Kai and Zhu's bracelet. It turned out that she could stand up for herself, but this only provoked the guy. Did she really decide to resist for the last time? Pulling the arrow out of his stomach, the red-haired man threw it to the floor, and the girl took advantage of this momentary hitch to rush to the side. She called Zio Q to save her, but of course he couldn't hear it. The guy was yelling at her back that she could continue to scream and call for help as much as she wanted. Because the more desperate she was, the more he was in anticipation. The young man ran out after her into the street and watched as the girl stumbled and fell. He said she wouldn't get far, didn't he? The guy squatted down and threw out some blue energy, directing it directly at his victim. A bright blue light hit Kai and Zhu and she was pinned to a thick tree trunk. She was crucified and then screamed and fell to the ground face down. The red-haired man was surprised. Did this girl not withstand even one blow? How is it that the venerable lady of the Night Soul Clan doesn't have the power? The guy turned out to be very disappointed with this fact. However, as he approached the girl closer and closer, she again fired an arrow from her bracelet which was hidden under her clothes, and it hit him right in the teeth. He laughed and asked if she only had arrows in stock. The brunette released three more in a row, but the young man was able to dodge and said that it was all too boring for him. It's time to end this. Therefore, he approached the girl and grabbed her by the throat, pressing her against a tree with incredible strength, and even so high that she did not even reach the ground with the tip of her shoes. She couldn't release the arrows, because the guy intercepted her hand, and again asked the princess of the Night Soul Clan, the strongest clan in the world, if she was capable of something more than just arrows. Where is her true power hidden? Wheezing through her tears, Kai and Zhu replied that it was none of his damn business. Then the guy just told her to go to hell in that case. The girl only repeated the name of the blonde again, hoping to save her life. At this time, Q Lin and Zio Yu were walking through the streets of the Night City. The girl asked the guy if everything would really be fine if she joined their group, and did the head of Kai and Zhu really like her. The blonde replied that she should not worry about this and as soon as they get home, she will be surprised at what a luxurious dinner Zhu has prepared in her honor. Yu continued to underestimate herself in the eyes of others and said that such a non-entity like her would only pull her comrades back. So why did they choose her then? Lin asked if she really considered herself so weak. Now she is a sorceress of only rank 5, but her healing light is able to save a life as much as 10 times. And if he's not mistaken, then its former head is a rank 9 warrior. And it's terrifying. It's possible that even a rank 7 wizard won't be able to heal a rank 9 warrior as many as 10 times. So her healing magic is much superior to ordinary people, it's just that she's not good at control. The girl was a little doubtful about this, but the blonde told her to just trust him. Zio Q Lin remembered the reason why Zio Yu couldn't control spells from a distance. It's all about the wrong staff. She just needs to wait a bit and then they will make a new staff for her. Already approaching the house, the couple heard a strange loud crash. From the first second, Q Lin realized that Kai and Zhu was there and rushed to the side where the sound was coming from. The girl slowed down a bit and asked the blonde man what had happened there. But he only ran away and asked her to hurry, because the head of Kain was in danger. At this time, the red-haired man continued to strangle the brunette, considering everything that was happening a real boredom. He let go of the girl and she fell to the ground with a crash, trying to inhale a piece of air. The guy called her too weak, with her strength she couldn't even beat Leon. Clearing her throat, Zhu asked what he meant. And he replied that in other words, the information was not correct. She can't be the princess of the Night Soul Clan because she's not capable of sneaking into the Bodden family's house and killing Lee. It tastes completely tasteless, which is very disappointing. The red-haired man turned in the other direction and said that he would go in search of Sio Q because he was his target. The girl shouted for the guy to stop, because their fight is not over yet, but he just waved goodbye and went deep into the forest, and I asked her not to call this misunderstanding a fight, but only sent her to sleep in her crib. The girl hissed through her teeth so that he would not underestimate her, and rushed from the spot to attack. However, she suffered another setback, because the guy just kicked her in the stomach, and the brunette flew away a few meters. She raised whole clouds of dust and earth with her body, and the guy was tired of it to the edge and he let her go, why does she still want it? Did she really want to die by his hand? The girl croaked that she was the head of the Thousand Snows group, and therefore she. The guy interrupted her without even listening, because she had had enough already. 
She'd better not try to get up at all. Somehow getting up from the ground, Zhu agreed that she would protect her friend and would not allow such a dangerous person to harm him. She ran towards the guy again with a belligerent cry, and he just stood and sighed from this headache. She's starting to complicate things herself. The guy put his hand out in the air and the girl fell, not even having time to reach him. The red-haired man asked her to just sit still, under the influence of gravity, and it sounded pretty calm, but the guy was just tired of all this circus. However, he was very surprised when the girl was able to block his gravity and got up from the ground. The girl said that she would not let this guy go anywhere, and he thought that with her strength, she was still able to move, and even under tenfold gravity. The red-haired man informed Sue that his patience also has a limit, and if she sincerely wants to die today, then so be it, he will fulfill her wish. Although he was sincerely sorry for such a good cook, it would seem that Kai and Zhu was already ready to meet her death at this moment. Even hurried the guy so that he would not follow Sai O Kyu Lin, but suddenly behind the guy she saw just a huge old man in a beautiful cloak and with burning eyes, seeing that the victim was looking somewhere behind him. The young man turned over his shoulder and the old man told him in a rather polite form not to be so reckless. And then, the red-haired man suddenly flew to the side, as if from a blow. The catch was that no one beat him. And the girl realized that this old man had hit the boy with just the power of his thought. He flew into a stone wall. And suddenly the guy came up with the idea that the girl, it turns out, had a bodyguard. At this time, the old man said out loud that Princess Kainzu had suffered greatly because of his belated rescue. And then the man sat down on his knees and bowed his head in front of the princess, offering her his deepest apologies. The brunette replied to the grand elder that he should not be so polite to her, because she was no longer a princess. The man said that the head of the clan missed her very much from the day she escaped from home. And so, it's been a whole three months since they were ordered to come to the Divine King mainland to find her. The girl was very surprised that the man said us. Is there anyone else besides him? Then the elder replied that the eldest son of the Ming Dixie clan had arrived with him. The girl was perplexed. Why did he come at all? While they were talking there, the red-haired man hobbled back and asked if they were chatting. They didn't think he was already dead, did they? Taking more air into his mouth, the guy exhaled the blue light again, but the elder considered him only an ant and raising his hand to the side, ordered him to disappear. Then the guy was thrown away by magical force, but in the end he was able to stand on his feet. The young man could not understand what kind of strange old man came in even at such an inopportune moment. Even he can die if this guy alternates with such powerful attacks. The girl, it would seem, was even a little worried whether the guy had suffered from such a blow from the elder. But the young man just grinned. Is he the one? Does she have a squint? It's worth it intact. The old man realized that it was clearly not an ordinary boy standing in front of him. The guy asked the girl if she had noticed how his mood had deteriorated, all because this huge old man managed to make him angry. Amidst the dense forest and bright crickets, Zio Kyu Lin ran as fast as he could to help his supervisor, Zio Yu, who ran after them with the last of her strength, whined that they had been running for too long, but for some reason they still could not reach home. And he seems to be very close. Kyu Lin felt some kind of vibration. He realized that the surrounding air began to strengthen with a powerful magical force, and even the space around them began to distort. After a long run, they returned to the return point. Was it really an illusion? You asked the guy what was going on, because he stood still for a long time and was silent, but he only told her that she should monitor her surroundings. It is possible that they have fallen under the influence of a very powerful illusion. It seems that someone attacked them. A strange black creature with one big green eye was looking at the guys from a tree branch. It made a strange sound. In the next second, Zai o Kyu Lin's legs were enveloped by large maroon tentacles, and then the girl. She asked the blonde what it was, and Kyu Lin replied that it was all an illusion. You didn't understand how they got into this swamp, but Lin told her not to worry, because it really was just an illusion. Everything she sees here is fake. Zai o, you didn't really believe in these words, because these huge tentacles scared her terribly. One of them squeezed her stomach very hard, and she couldn't understand why it all felt like reality. The blue-eyed one only said that it was all because the illusion was very reliable. The girl was attacked from all sides and she began to fear that very soon she might just suffocate from lack of air. The guy doubted his words now, because everything really looked like the real thing. Is everything really true? The blonde screamed and asked what they would do now. The guy suddenly realized something. If this is not an illusion, then the only thing it can turn out to be is a spatial displacement technique. They were moved from Green Lake to a completely different place, and looking at this big monster with big teeth and green eyes, and the surrounding environment, it must be the Divine King's Lotus Swamp. The only question is, what could have moved them to such a remote place? This strange strange and huge octopus had already wrapped all its limbs around Zio Kyu Lin's body, and then the guy pulled one with his hand. First, they need to deal with an urgent problem, and only then begin to reflect. The octopus opened its big mouth, preparing to have dinner with a guy. 
At this time, he called for a blue stone. A huge blue sword hit the mantra right in the throat. 